Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode 51 of Let's Play Super Mario RPG. Last time we made all the way to Bowser's Keep, which seems to be the final area in the game, and I've just come back to Mulebitville really quick to buy this item. He, yep, the guy from the guy who searched out stuff from the mines. He now has the metal plate for 300 coins. I don't know where you find a metal plate in that mine, because I think I would have found it. It would be pretty obvious to anyone exploring there. But what that actually is, is a frying pan, which is Peach's ultimate weapon. Raises your attack all the way to 177, which is actually stellar considering she has a laser shell, which lowers her attack. Definitely pick that up if you have the money for it. If you don't, then go grind, or there is another really good weapon for her that we'll be picking up inside Bowser's Keep. And speaking of Bowser's Keep, I think it's time to actually go there now. Not too much else that I want to do. There's a lot of stuff that I could do, to be honest with you. But not too much that I want to do right now. I'll do a bunch of stuff in bonus episodes and things. But for now, let's head to Bowser's Keep and unleash... I was about to say unleash the wrath of Smithy, but I think that's already been pretty well unleashed. We're going to stop the wrath of Smithy. Ha ha! Here we go. And, just like the beginning of the game, this area looks really no different. These enemies are a little bit harder, because, obviously, they can't have you fighting terrapins at the very beginning here. The very beginning of the end of the area. Or the end of the game, I mean. So these are terracottas instead, which is obviously a reference to the terracotta material, which is kind of like clay, but not really. It's better. Man, we're doing obscene amounts of damage. And by the end of this, we're just going to be doing more and more and more, because you're going to get like 20 to 30 experience per battle. So, oh my goodness, the Forkies are enraptured. They're so cute. Just like the Joffles, but with no expression on their faces. I don't think Joffles have expressions either, so I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Smash, smash. Forkies have come to their senses. So is that how you get out of enrapturement? You come to your senses? Because I have no idea what enrapturement is, to be honest with you. All I think about that when I hear that word is, like, the rapture in itself. And are you dead yet? These guys always seem to have, like, a little bit more HP than I predict. So, like, I think I'm gonna kill them in one hit, but then it- or, well, not in one hit, but, like, in a certain hit, I think I'm gonna kill them. And then it takes me one more hit after that to kill them, and I'm like, huh, that's kinda odd. And... Yeah, see, I thought I was gonna kill them in that hit, and I might kill them the next turn, I'm not sure. Storm. Storm of electric blue static. And, yeah, there he goes. Okay. Thank you. So this is it guys, this is basically the final part of the game right here, the ultimate run of the gauntlet. And we've got Goombas in it for some random reason. I don't know. Goombas the signature enemy of Mario, I guess. You gotta have them in the final area and the very beginning of the game. Bam. Also got a Star Cruster for no reason at all. He's just here. I kind of, I find it kind of interesting that this area still has, like, a bunch of enemies that are, like, they're from the Koopa Troop originally, but now they're loyal to Smithy, but they still, like, as you can see by some things that happen in battles, especially if you have Bowser in your front three, they're still somewhat kind of, uh, I don't know, loyal to Bowser, because sometimes they'll get, like, confused or run away when he's in battle. They'll even do that sometimes when he's not in battle. So that just shows, like, they're kind of scared of what he's going to think. So that's a pretty interesting little thing to know there. Man, you're so predictable, Starcruster. Just get out of here. I ain't got no business with you. Should be back under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Yeah, I would do that in a Jamaican accent, but I can't do a Jamaican accent, so sorry. Oh boy. Koopa Paratroopa and his big fat bro. Here we go. It's actually a Malakoopa and the Tubbo Troopa. <laughs> oh my god, that name's hilarious. I think it's just hilarious because they put like the O right in the middle there and he looks like a big O. Yeah, there you go. His mood affected the monster. 
Uh, he looks like a big round stupid O. Man. It's like a winged and Koopa. Heavy Trooper, ready to launch. Ba ba ba. Yeah, get out of here. Oh, I thought I thought the Malakoop was actually gonna kill a Tubber Trooper there for a second. But no, it took Gino to do that. It took Gino to deal with that mess. And you die. Good stuff. So this area is not hard overall, but it is a really fun, cool little area. Just jump over those guys when they charge at you. Charge! Alright, so I think this is the area that we first rescued Peach way back in the beginning of the game. Wow, they came to like within a pixel of me there. And now it's just infested with like random enemies. That's kind of interesting that like the actual spot where we fought, faced off against Bowser, it actually has like the classic Mario enemies like the Koopas and the Goombas. They're just all like kind of in that room. I never thought about that before, honestly. Hmm. That's probably not symbolic at all. Because, you know, most things aren't symbolic. And, well, they are symbolic, but they are not meant to be symbolic. Alright, BAM! I feel like if I, pr if I press the button harder, it makes a bigger damage number. Because I, like, press the button so hard right there. It's crazy. Ah! Yeah, Goo Goo, but oh my god, it's the Bullshit Brigade. Okay. So, let's deal with it. Let's try an Ultra Jump, see what we can do. Come on, Mario. Let's rock the house. Though it is being divided amongst six enemies, so... I don't know how much... If it's gonna, like, if it's gonna kill any of them. It might. Mario's ridiculous attack. Oh, it killed three of them. That's pretty good, honestly. Yeah. The Koopas aren't actually weak to jump, by the way. They're weak to thunder, I think it is. I thought they would be weak to jump, though, because... Isn't that what the ones, like, earlier before were affected by? Or were weak to? I don't know. Just this one terracotta left to go. The terracotta army of one! Aha! I beat you. Okay, and jump over you. I actually remember that guy. Because I have, I have had one failed recording here before. Think nothing of it, though. An ambush! Wow. And, ooh. It's like three completely separate enemies that have nothing to do with one another. All converging in one spot, thanks to Smithy. That damn sword. Forkies have come to their senses. Well, not for much longer. I'm gonna knock the senses right out of you. But not before you use Storm. That looks like it would hurt. And it kinda did, honestly. Man. I love those statues in the background too. Well not not well they're kinda in the background, but they're more off to the side. If you're looking at it from the perspective that the character's looking at it from. They look like statues of like Roy Koopa or something. Cause it looks like they're wearing sunglasses, so they look like Roy Koopa. I don't know if that was intentional, but that's what it looks like to me. Roy Koopa with the hammer of Thor! Ooh, Mario reached level 21. How lovely. I might just, like, continue raising his pal, Mario's pal, for- Oh, man! He was gonna jump right over me, but I jumped into him. Goo Goomba. Yeah, I might just raise Mario's pal for the rest of his level ups now. Because he doesn't really need much else. Just needs to be more and more powerful. He can't get enough power. Captain, we're running low on power! Rats. We've been jammed. What kind of jam? Raspberry. There's only one man who would dare to hit me with raspberry. Lone Star. Okay then. Yeah, so you can gain some ridiculous levels in this place, like I was saying before. Uh, before we move up there, I'm gonna go to this secret room here. It's not too secret, but you have to be kind of observant to notice it. Not that it's like a major thing if you miss it, it's just some coins and a full heal. And now we got a save block, and Croco, Dude! What's he doing up there? Even he's converted to Smithy's side now? What an asshole! But wait, he was on Smithy's side before, wasn't he, because he was evil? So maybe now that he's here, he's a good guy. And it looks like he is, he's just being nice to us, giving us tips and stuff. And he's even selling us some things, which is really interesting. So many things are just interesting in this area, like little tidbits of stuff that 
you wouldn't, well, you might notice, but if, unless you, like, look into the context, which I like to do a lot, you won't know what it kind of means. What do we got here? These are six doors. Need an explanation? Hmm, six doors. I, I don't know. That's a tough concept to grasp, but I, I think I can handle it myself. So these six doors behind each one is a three trial room. So, yeah, you have to go through three rooms, each with a different challenge in it. And those challenges can be based on many different things like battling and platforming and mind powers. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. But behind four of these ultimate doors, which is what I'm going to call them, there are the ultimate weapons of four of your characters, conveniently. There's one for Peach, Geno, Mallow, and Bowser. But since we already got Peaches, we don't really need that. I might show it off anyways. Because it is a really good weapon for Peach if you don't have the frying pan. But I do, so it doesn't matter. Alright, so let's just tackle some random door here. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to take these in order or not. Let's choose door number four. What's this? What do we got here? Oh, hello. This looks interesting. Heh. <laughs> I'm the quiz master, but you can call me Dr. T. You into coin collecting, huh? Want instructions? Uh, you take me for a fool, chump? What do you think of me? Alright, so basically, you gotta hit this. I think this block has like 20 coins in it. And you've gotta hit it a few times, and then he'll hit it a few times. And basically, whoever has it when the coin total reaches zero is a loser. So I'm just gonna kinda wing it here. We'll go with... Okay. I'm going to hit it three times, and then I forget how to pass it to him. Pass. Okay. Let's see. I'm not even keeping track of the coin totals, honestly. Let's try two, maybe. Three. Four. Oh, I have a feeling I'm going to fail this. Oh. I win! Heh, <laughs> you win. Nothing to it, right? I got freaking lucky there, man. I hate that puzzle. And we continue through. And this is great fun. The topic you ask? Magic buttons! Heh <laughs> heh. I feel like that's a pop culture reference, but I'm not sure if it is. One instruction is no thanks. Basically, this is like any- This is like that one kid's toy. It was probably from, like, Tiger or something. But you have to press the buttons, and- Depending on which button you press, the ones around it will go down along with the button you actually press. So, like, if I press this one, for example, then those four, well, those, the three adjacent buttons will go down. The diagonal ones that are adjacent won't go down, so keep that in mind. People make this out to be actually a lot harder than it is, because, honestly, this is really easy. Like, when I first did this, I had trouble with it, too. But once you know a certain pattern, it's actually really easy. So basically hit the w top one, r uh, okay, the one in the top row, one from the left, or from the right. Then you want to hit this one, which is the right row, one, one from the down. And then, ba basically it's just like the same pattern, but you rotate it clock clockwise. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how you do it. You only have to hit four buttons. Yep, smooth sailing. And in here we have, oh yeah, this is a game that I remember playing, like a board game. No, I don't need instructions. Basically, you gotta jump these balls one over the other until eventually you just have one left. So, I'm not sure how, how do you actually move the balls, though? I'm not sure how to move the balls. I'm gonna talk to him. I can't talk to him. This is stupid. Um, can I just push it? No. Wow, this is a fail. The thing I'm having trouble with is pushing the ball. Okay, there we go. Yeah, all you have to do is press A. That's it. Alright, looks like this is our only option at this point. Well, not really, but... Try this one. I don't really have a strategy for this one. I just kind of wing it. Man. Uh, we'll deal with you. Oh, man. There's like this one up here, though, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of it. Oh, wait, I might. I might. Let's try this. There we go. Yeah, so try not to get any balls like far off to the side like that one was. Otherwise, you might screw yourself up. Um. 
Oh, I don't know if that was a good idea or not. I'm just looking at this carefully. Oh, this isn't going to work at all. No, I fail. I fail! And you get sent all the way back out if you lose. So, screw door number four. We're going with door number one. Got ten tries? Okay, I can handle this one. Yeah, I just... This video is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I want to do at least one of these trial doors. Or these ultimate doors, as I was calling them before. Sorry for being qu kind of quiet there last time, too. Because you got to concentrate sometimes with these puzzles. Alright, Royal Syrup. I will definitely take that in place of this Honey Syrup. Don't know why those enemies at the beginning were dropping that crap. Honey Syrups and Mushrooms. Pshaw! Ice Bomb, no thanks. Yeah, and if you haven't gotten the concept of this already, basically you can jump to reveal the path for like half a second. And... Oh, a rock candy, that's very good. So just jump to reveal the path for a split second, and then try to memorize it, kind of. And eventually you'll reach the end. Just like that. And here we've got probably my least favorite of these platforming sections. Something about this one in particular is just really annoying. Okay, ah crap, I could have made that. I was about to. You only got like 10 tries, so you can only fail at like any of these individually 10 times. Or 9 times, I guess. Max Mushroom, I'll take that. Get rid of one of these bracers that I have. I don't even know where I got those, honestly. Okay, where does this take me? Up to another item block, maybe? Oh, perhaps. This reminds me of Frogger. Oh my god, it does. It's like Frogger, kind of. Oh, well, not like all Frogger, it's just that one level in the Frogger computer game. It's that one with, like, the factory. I remember it so vividly because I played Frogger for, like, so many hours when I was a kid. No. Oh, thanks. Man. This platforming section is not as hard as the I remember it. But just watch me fail now. Oh, God. But yeah, it's like that one level in the factory, and you have to, like, hop across these platforms, and it's like a puzzle level. It's a puzzle in Frogger. I know. Man, that, cr that Frogger game was hard, man. I don't think I ever beat it, either. Red Essence is definitely worth it. Drop a bracer for that. Man, 17 and a half minutes. Well, you know, it's the final area of the game. You need plenty of time to take in the atmosphere of this place. I mean, the music and the dark atmosphere in general is just great. Great fun. And we get a flower for that. Sweet. No! Oh my... <laughs> I was on the... No! Oh, I did it! <laughs> what the hell is wrong? Okay, I make it across, like, all these platforms without hardly a problem. And then I fail on that? I don't think so. That's just stupid. Right, ah, barrels. Flying barrel monkeys. No! Yeah, and you, you lose some coins when you fail, too, so be wary of that. Not the coins matter too, too much at this point, especially when we come to a certain area. So basically, you just want to jump these barrels and then wait for the gap in between this Donkey Kong up here throwing the barrels. Basically, this is the 3D version of the original Donkey Kong game, and he just owned me in the face. Do you see that? Nor normally, like, jump on the barrels and you die. He just threw that one straight at me. He's like, I I've seen enough of you and your ugly stash and jumping powers. Jumping prowess, if you will. I think you can, yeah, you can, like, stay to one side, and sometimes the barrels will pass you because they go along, like, two different columns, or two different rows on these rows. Alright, he's done. Oh my god! I thought he was done. You you fooled me, Donkey Kong. Fooled me for the last time. This is going to be a 20-minute episode. It really is. I think I got this this time. Oh no. <laughs> I got this this time. Just run face first into a barrel. Alright, here we go. This is the time. No! <laughs> I need to stop saying that. Man, this is taking longer than I anticipated. Don't worry, the next video will be really short, because I, I have a feeling I can take out the rest of these trials in probably like a 13, 12 minute video. This one in particular is just, I think this is actually the worst of the trials. Just like these three together, they just don't, they're not good together. That's all I'm going to say. And this gets the Super Slap, which is Peach's ultimate weapon, if I recall. Well, her so-called ultimate weapon. It allows her to master the ancient art of the bitch slap. And there it is. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll show what it lowers her attack to at this point now. 
Yeah, see, it lowers it by 20, so that's how powerful the frying pan is. But if you don't have the time or patience to grind up for coins to get the frying pan, then I understand. So, that's it for the first door of ultimateness. Next time, we will take on the remaining five, or well, actually, only three of the remaining five, because you only need to beat three of them, or four of them, in order to advance. And, you know what, this video has gone on for too long. Thanks everyone for watching, and until next time, this is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you, and good night.